guys, Romy here, so please like, comment, subscribe. I'm trying to do something different to see if I can do this without using the lights. Now, this is my review for, what is this called, Jesus? Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 10, Episode 6, All Aboard the Shady Express. Now, the episode, again, please like, comment, subscribe. The episode starts off with... Portia versus Nini and Sheree is consoling Portia because Portia is crying and she just feels like she doesn't just doesn't understand how all of those people are there supporting Nini or left with Nini when Nini's had an issue with every single one of them. She just doesn't get it. It's not clicking with her. She's trying to figure out oh, excuse me. Okay, what's actually going on here because I don't understand how this is possible. I don't understand how Nini has had issues with each and every one of them. And yet, they're not seeing that, you know, Nini may be the actual issue versus her. That's what Portia's really trying to say. Of course, Sheree's there consoling her because Sheree, she's a bone carrier. So she needs to get the information from Portia because she's eventually going to spill it. And two, it's her trip. So she feels a little bad. Nini is going off. Nini's like, oh, shut up, B. You little B. Oh, I was your big sister. And they bring up the fact that Nini keeps talking about how she keeps saying, oh, she was, uh, what's her name? Portia's big sister, essentially, and all of that. But Portia's trying to let Nini know that you keep saying that, but your actions don't dictate it. And something that comes up a little bit later is going to be very interesting. But Nini's whole mantra, aside from her issues with Portia, was she's going to fight Candy's battle. Because at this point, because Nini's ear irritated with Portia, She's essentially acknowledging the fact that Candy is essentially an OG. No, she's not from season one, but she's from season two. So she's basically almost been here from the beginning for when the show was really starting to kick off. So now, uh, she's just like, what What she did to you, Candy, was so wrong. And how she keeps acting like, oh, it was Phaedra this, Phaedra that. But no, she was the one that went, yes, we all agree. Yes, we all get that. But let's be clear. Nini has definitely insinuated more than once that Portia needed to um, go or that Portia deserved to go. Whether Nini was right or wrong, the whole question is, did she do it or not? Yes, she did it. Kenya now chimes in and talks about how, you know, Portia is the, denom the common denominator because Portia is the one that keeps having all these issues with people and Portia is the one that keeps kind of playing it off like, oh, it's not that bad. Or, oh, it's not much of a problem. <sighs> Here's my stance. My stance is they're both wrong. And I can say that because I because I mean it. They're both wrong. Portia is wrong because Portia doesn't under, get the concept of I, I, I does not work. When you want to hear someone else's point of view, you can't go in there um, just, you know, putting yours above theirs. And I get it. Because of how Nini's coming at her, people are saying, oh, well, Portia needs to go. No. Here's the thing. If Portia is the one that's saying that she really wants to go and have a resolution, you have to be able to speak to people a certain way and also take it. Portia can't really take it. For some reason, she can't really take someone coming at her like da 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 if she wants real resolution. Because in maturity, you learn that sometimes you have to let someone vent and say what they need to say. And sometimes with them doing that fully, you can say, you know what, I acknowledge that. I acknowledge that. And yes, she's done it to a certain degree, but clearly has been enough. Nini, Nini needs to stop with this whole... Nini does the same thing to everyone. That's Nini's problem. Nini is consistent, but in a, um, in, in a good way, in a lot of ways, but then consistent negatively in other ways. And she does the same thing with each and every person over time, where it's, oh, I'm your big sister. Oh, I got your back. We gal pals. Next thing you know, she's trying to, she's not even trying to stab you. I'll give it to her. She's bulldozing you like, oh. So you thought, you did, okay, then you need to go. Then you need to exit. Then, yeah, this is my platform. When I did this, and where do you, you a bum. You, that's her mantra. That's what she does when she falls out of friendships with people. And that's not right either. That's whack. So the next day, we have to separate the two. Well, we see Marlo. She staged the room. You know, she does that well. And the thing is, they're going to separate the groups. So everyone's getting ready. 
was Portia talking to? Oh, Portia was talking to her mom and saying that her and Nini had a huge falling out. And it's just like, well, someone who's supposed to be your big sister is supposed to be a little bit more mature with that than the way she's acting. I do agree with that. I absolutely do agree with that. But, and my butt, yeah, my butt, my butt comes from, um, here's the main problem. Portia is old enough to know to act differently. That's what I'll say. We can't we need to stop going and saying, oh, she's ditzy. Oh, she's no, 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 no. Those are called excuses. We keep doing that for her. We need to stop. So next day, now it's time for, oh, awkward hug time on the trolley. And I do like on the trolley, Kenya, she talks about how she got the video for her grandmother. And apparently it was really nice. They all liked it. And she was just really emotional. But every everyone was there to support her. And I love the fact that they did that. Because it's so rare. Especially 10 seasons and all of the drama and strife that these ladies have had with each other. That they were able to genuinely console her. She felt it. She didn't feel like it was, um, you know, dis... What's the, what's the word? Disingenuous? Come on. But we have to talk about poor Portia. Portia starts crying. And we find out that... Her grandfather recently died, and that's why she's like, dang it. You know, in this moment of hearing Kenya and her getting the support and all of that, she's going through something too, and so she goes and gets up and leaves. Well, she goes to the outside part. Cynthia goes and follows her, and that's when Cynthia finds out about that, and then um, inside, they're thinking, Sheree's thinking, oh, maybe Portia's crying because, you know, no one's talking to her, and... You know, immediately Nini and uh, Nini and Candy get irritated because they're like, well, we're not talking to her for a reason. I mean, if she's getting that upset because of XYZ, then come on now. Maybe she shouldn't have done whatever. But my whole thing is she comes back in. Oh, before that, Cynthia, when she's talking to her, this is when we find out that... Um, that Cynthia also, you know, she's, we, we can tell Cynthia's always going to side-eye Nini a little bit. When I say side-eye Nini, I mean, she's always going to have her good eye open. Like, Nini does this to everyone. Nini blows up on everyone. Nini tries to get everyone fired. And then they do the flashback of three years ago when, um, remember when we were saying, oh, you know, at this point, before uh, Cynthia's storyline's all done and so she can go. Nini was saying the same thing because she was on the outs. Um. Nini felt that Cynthia chose a side, and that side was Kenya, and she couldn't have that. So then she, that's when she was doing her usual routine of, okay, she can go. She said the same thing about Candy, the same thing about Candy's whole, um, you know, clan. That's what I'll call them. Sheree, she's done that to all of them. Marlo, please, she cracks jokes every other day about Marlo, but... So we don't need to keep that in mind. Now, the groups do split off. It ends up being... Cynthia, Kenya, Nini, and Candy. And then we have Sheree, Marlo, and Portia. They're in Chinatown. And they actually go and they get to create... No, they get to see how fortune cookies are created. And they get to write their own personal messages. The funny part is... Because this episode had me cracking up the entire time. Why was it that... <laughs> Oh my god, this woman. Portia said, oh my god, Chinatown, you know, wh whenever I go w walking outside in Chinatown, it, it just feels like, it just feels like Tokyo. I said, to I, I said, <laughs> Tokyo, you mean Japan, in China, it feels like J Japan? Uh, you, uh, oh, Jesus. A portion moment, a portion moment, a portion moment, a portion moment. Now, the other group had their picture and they took it by Alcatraz. Um, an interesting thing to know is that what's going to happen next is they want to do something nice for Kenya. And they want to do something nice for Kenya because, as we know, her grandmother passed away. And they're thinking, okay, what can they do? So they're going to plot a originally they were going to do a party and i think portia was one of the one of the people spearheading this i said oh wow growth 
Next thing we know, Marlo takes over and says, why don't we do a mar? why don't we, you know, get her married? You know, officially. <laughs> and Shrey was like, no, don't do that. And we're all thinking, God, this could blow up. You know, production didn't make a big deal about, I mean, as far as the commercials, they didn't make a big deal about this, so I'm sure it's not the case, but hold on. Yeah, that was interesting, because it was actually Sheree that came up with the idea. And Kenya, in her previous scene, was, you know, doing her usual Kenya, and was like, well, you know, because Nini was saying, about this dude that Kenya is with, he's a scammer, she's known him, he's fleeced over $4 million. I said, $4 million? Yeah, and so she was like, you know, no, we need to make sure that Sheree's okay, that he doesn't take Chateau Sheree. And then Kenya's like, oh, well, you mean Chateau Thelma? Because <laughs> we know that it was being said that the house was in Sheree's mother's name and not in her own name. And we don't know what the case is now, but Chateau Thelma. And I thought the contrast of how, you know, she's... Kenya was making that joke there, but then the production made sure to show the next scene of Sheree saying, why don't we do something nice for Kenya? See, they're, they're always a little slick. So now it's the night of the marriage, and they have people, they all, it's basically a bunch of gay guys they got to come in as um, the brides and grooms, attendees, the ladies are dressed up, they look nice, it's a black and white theme, and Mark is coming. We're all thinking, wait, what? Marlo's like, yeah, Mark is coming. I said, Mar Marlo, how'd you, there's no way that you can go and finesse and something like that. You can do a lot of finessing, but not that. Nope. Mark showed up. Yes, Kenya's husband, Mark, the flat cardboard cutout of him showed up. Now, obviously, he didn't have his face. It was just a very generic cardboard cut up, cutout. It was actually white, so definitely wasn't him. But that was that was a cute idea. You know, everyone's laughing, ready to go. Everyone's just tiptoeing, like, hope this isn't like the divorce party you guys tried to throw last year. And I said, wow, I don't miss Phaedra on the show. When they show that clip, because Phaedra ran her course on the show, let's be real. She really did. Um, now, I, I, and I actually am glad that Nini's back. Nini does bring an extra energy extra comedic energy when she's just being her and it's not forced over the topness or when she's not super irritated now they get kenya to come in and kenya just has this look up i said uh oh well like, kenya they, kenya this is really this this is really this is in jest but then kenya starts to laugh i said thank you jesus because this, I feel like this is something right up her alley. And even though she wasn't in a good mood because her grandmother passed away and she had to do all that stuff regarding that, she was happy. So they got her a veil and a bouquet and she walked down the aisle. Nini married her and Matt together. Kenya was holding Matt up. Kenya, I mean, uh, Portia was holding Matt up. Portia dropped Matt. And everyone's like, you had one job what is wrong with this car <laughs> but it all worked out it all worked out kenya said i do and <laughs> she kissed the cardboard cut out it was great everyone was laughing ken you know it really brought a smile into her face so oh, i'm happy i'm happy that they did that for her i'm happy she was open to receiving it because that's always two parts oh and then we get to this other side of portia goes Takes Candy to the side. Candy says, oh, okay. Portia said, I, I'm really sorry for the part that I played and that it was, it was, you know, hurtful. It was evil. I know that I was wrong. And I just wanted to make sure that you knew that I know that I was wrong. And Candy said, you know what? I just want to go be amongst the group when we see each other. Hi, whatever. But that's it. And Portia said, okay, I, I understand. Thank you for your time. Um, I, I'll leave you alone for the rest of the night. And I'm thinking, Portia, just let it go. You hurt your friend who really did have your back. And that's why I will say, Candy and Nini definitely had Portia's back. Um, Candy never did anything to Portia. Nini, on the ha other hand, that's, that's a different story. So now next day, we're on this bus. And the bus takes them to a train. That'll take them to 
their destination. I said, oh, this is too, too much. So on the bus, everyone's cool. Uh, Mark was there, and Kenya was really happy. So I think Portia was like, hmm, did Kenya, did Kenya get down with Mark? Did Mark get Kenya a little something, something at me? She's in a very good mood. Mind you, now on this train ride, because Portia had to use the bathroom, she got left with Kenya and Candy to sit with on this one. It's an hour and a half train ride. So now they're trying to do small talk. Now, this is the interesting part. Um. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was interesting. So they talk about the fact that Porsche is a baby vegan. She's been vegan for a couple of weeks. And Candy starts laughing because she's like, <laughs> Candy's like, what, you give her one week? Mm, yeah. Give it two or three. I mean, I'll give her a chance. Portia, thankfully, she, again, this is called maturity because the old Portia would have been like, oh, she would have been in their feelings over something small as that just because she knows of the issues she had with those other two. But this time around, she just took it in jest. And the next thing you know, they went to Kenya. And Kenya was talking about Mark and how she's eventually changed so much of herself for him in a positive way. And she says that, you know what? She even learned from him what to do and what not to do in a relationship. I said, what? She said, yeah. Uh, I was kind of, you know, I, I was saying, oh, where are we going? Then he said, Brooklyn is like, and I said, oh, Brooklyn. And then he said, wait, let's not do that. And she realized, oh, maybe I don't need to say it like that. And I said, so Mark had to come and give you some... Oh, Kenya. Kenya might... This might be onto something. Portia was hearing how Kenya was going on and on and felt like, ooh, she doesn't know Mark, but she just hopes it's not a situation where he's too controlling because she was in a relationship like that. And then we see the flashback again of, yeah, that, yeah but her relationship was different. Or at least, as far as we know, it was different because um, Portia wasn't happy. And it was clear that Portia wasn't happy. Kenya is thrilled and over the moon. I, I know they, they're still in their honeymoon phase, but we'll see what happens. So again, it was weird. Sheree was being honest with Marlo and said, oh yeah, her dude's in jail. Marlo looked at her like, oh, what? Yeah, he's a scammer. He's a scammer. Sheree said, look, he didn't go and do what you think he did. He went and... Yeah, he did go and steal some documents. He did steal some information from people's documents. He did a little bit of scamming here and there. But it's fine. It's cool. It's not a problem. Again, Nini knows him. So Nini feels like... Type of thing. It was like, oh, it's, you know, it's wire fraud. Or no, it, at least it's not wire fraud. It's something silly like that. Kenya went, I guess, to the bathroom. And Portia and... Candy had regular girl talk, had regular conversations. How's the group going? It's actually going really well. We're going on tour next year. It's going to be a great time. Is my hair on this stuff? Okay, it's a little thinner there. Thank God. That's all. Anyway, it's one of those things of they're actually having a decent conversation. Candy said, you know what, I'm not an evil person, so to ignore this girl for an over-hour train ride, uh, that's not in me. I said, okay, that's fair enough. But then Candy got brought over to the other group because the other group wanted to talk to her and figure out, okay, so what's going on over there? And Candy let me know that Porsche J apologized last night, and I told her, essentially, yeah, whatever. Cause, and they made it very clear that Candy, you have every right to be, and Cynthia said best, you have every right to be upset or to process this in your own time and to, to potentially forgive her or not on your own time. Don't do it on hers, don't do it on ours, don't do it on anyone else's. And so I appreciated that. I, I feel like that was real. I feel like that was authentic. Um, Kenya again talking about her husband and she's just over the moon. And Portia said, you know what? I'm really happy for you. I truly am happy for you. And... I, um, you know, I apologized to Candy about what I did. Uh, me, 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 we're on the outs right now. And Kenya gave her some real advice. I said, this is, this is nice. Just bonding moments. Or, you go from pulling a bullhorn in someone's face to 
yanking out that person down to the ground. So you two having a civilized conversation on a train ride. That's that's God. That is God. That is God. Um, because Kendra told her, you know, sometimes if you're on the defense so much, you're not receiving anything that someone is saying. So maybe if you're just really like truly open, and even if they're coming at you a certain way, like I said earlier in this review, if you just let them talk so that they can at least get how they feel out, then you could um, potentially move on. They get there to the wine vineyard and <laughs> this man, apparently we find out later on in the episode that he's married, but he was hitting on all the ladies. He was kissing them. He was hugging them, rubbing them, feeling them. And they were loving it because they're like, oh, God. yeah, we know we bad, but it's always nice to hear from someone else. And he even showed Portia how to open his bottles. Like, yeah, so you grab the base firmly and you stroke. <laughs> so we're doing too much. He was even feeding the women grapes. Marlo went, took, this is the whole grape thing. Marlo went, opened her mouth, gone. The whole thing was gone. I said, oh my God. Oh my God. I said, no teeth. Marlo. And someone said, that must be no Sheree was like that's how Marlo fourth to hold them bags and all that. I said Sheree, that's not that's not a secret. Marlo's acknowledged that she's used what she has to go she wants. <laughs> that's why even though Marlo, as we know, was a scammer in the past, I respect her because at least she's honest. People don't understand that's how this world works for the most part. So now, like I said, once the ladies found out that he was married, they're like ah ah ah. But then he told the woman, here, you're going to have to go and squish your own grapes because that's how we make this thing called wine. And it was cute. I think it was only Nini and um, Nini and Candy who didn't do it. And Candy was like, oh, no, the, the grapes are squishy. And, you know, ugh, the juices are going to fly out you, at, fly back at you. Kenya was having a great time. She was like, oh, it's like the salsa. You need to, you need to dance with it. Portia was doing the lecture slide, slide to the left, slide to the right. Oh, I did that right. Praise God. I thought I was saying, it's Sunday. That's why I keep saying that. Oh, well, it should be every day. But hey, actually it is every day. It's just not on this camera. Now, but it was cute. They're having a good time. Even um, with Portia, you know, just being herself and goofy. Everyone was laughing. Everyone was having a moment. And I like the fact that they weren't, you know, intentionally just trying to continue to be upset about it. They were just letting the moment happen. Kenya has to go back home, so everyone sees Kenya home, and again, she appreciates the fact that the ladies actually had her back. Now, it's dinner time. Kenya is gone, so now it's time to talk about Kenya. Mark is still there, so again, Kenya is the topic of discussion. And they bring up the fact that Marlo wants to bring up a game. So who thinks Kenya is really married? Candy did put her hand up like, yeah, I really think the girl is married. But Cynthia was upset. Cynthia was very upset because, well, Candy also said that Tom wanted to go and see the restaurant. Not talk to the guy, but just see the restaurant. Cynthia didn't feel like it was appropriate for them to just talk about Kenya and her just sit there and let them do it. And especially since Kenya wasn't there to defend herself. So she got up and left. Marlo was upset because she felt like, why is it that Cynthia is getting so upset about us just expressing ourselves? Why is she being fake? If she's upset, then da da da. Nini did. Nini, again, still being hurt by this situation, tried to make it seem like, oh, Cynthia's upset. Um, you know, Cynthia is just so wound up around Kenya that, of course, anything negative or anything constructive about Kenya, she's just going to go and flip out. But then. I'm trying to think who was it someone said you know what um nini went to go and uh talk to cynthia and everyone was discussing that cynthia's probably upset because she didn't get an invite and she's really this girl's friends and they've argued over the years of you know are you my friend are you not my friend and it's not like kenya didn't have people there at her wedding so that was also the other thing so now Nini is talking to Cynthia, letting her know, look, just be honest. Just be honest about why you're upset. Um, just 
like you weren't there you're her friend you have never met this guy so then Cynthia finally comes back and she 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 finally puts it out there that yeah she walked away because she was hurt not really because of what you guys are saying but because she wanted to why does Marlo look like Contessa anyway she was saying that yeah it is a little hurtful or at least strange that I didn't get an invite or I or at least haven't met this guy yet and it's supposed to be really close friends and you know I don't know how to feel about that so I said thank you at least you were honest about it instead of us looking at you like we know this is why you're really mad why can't you just say it next week she says it again all growth all growth so that's it please like comment subscribe come back next week